Okay, hello parents and carers at ECC. Tom Miniman, head teacher here, uh, with uh, a relatively short video update which accompanies a letter that you'll also be receiving together along with this. Um, we hope, first of all, that you've had really great Easter holidays uh, and that you are all well. And uh, we are really looking forward to what is going to be quite a long summer term, but uh, hopefully a really, really positive one. And I want to just update you on a number of uh, bits of news and also talk a little bit about that continuing journey into the summer term, uh, working on a number of our key priorities with our young people. Um, so the first thing to uh, talk about is the publication of Ofsted's reports based on our inspection in February. It does take some time for these reports to be published, but it has now been shared with us uh, to share with you as parents uh, and it will be published on Ofsted's website next week. Um, the report um, uh, indicates or grades us uh, as being good for leadership and management uh, and personal development and for our sixth form provision uh, and requires improvement for our quality of education and our behaviour and attitudes. And we are proud that that's an improvement, that's progress on the previous inspection, but we also know uh, that there is lots of work that we still need to do. It gives us a requires improvement outcome overall, uh, which we do feel is a fair reflection uh, of where we are at as a school. But I really hope that you will take time to read the text of the report rather than just look at the grading because the grading is a very blunt instrument and the text gives more nuance uh, to the journey uh, and uh, the confidence of the inspector's team in uh, our work on that journey and the direction of travel. And they were very positive about the early steps that we've made on that journey uh, and really confident that with obviously further work that we will uh, continue to develop uh, to make the school the very best place that it can be for your sons and daughters. And I've always tried to be really open about that with parents and carers that we know we've got lots to do and we're working really, really hard uh, to make sure uh, that we make this the best school it can possibly be in all areas uh, for the community of Exmouth and surrounding. Um, so uh, that report will be out today. Uh, it may be something that uh, the, lo the, the local media pick up on. And I just want to say a huge thanks uh, to you as parents and carers for your continued support, because um, without that support, it would be much harder to be moving on the journey that we're moving on. Uh, and your su support came through very strongly uh, in the feedback to Ofsted as part of that inspection. And that has helped to give them confidence, of course, uh, in uh, the way in which we are steering uh, and carrying the school. The next bit of the jigsaw puzzle uh, in terms of our journey forwards um, is um, about our membership of a multi-academy trust and that's something that the governors are continuing to work on at the moment. We hope to have an update uh, on that for parents and carers uh, in fairly short, uh, short period of time. But uh, that is something that will never be at the forefront of your experience of ECC. Uh, ECC will always be your community school led by us, the leaders of the school. And um, any multi-academy trust that we work with will be there supporting us uh, to do exactly that. So the things that we have really been focusing on and we've been speaking to students this week in assemblies on is continuing that uh, journey and particularly framed around our new vision, uh, which we released last term uh, with our strap line of enabling young people to flourish uh, through our core values of belonging, ambition and responsibility. And I've spoken about that with students in assemblies on Monday this week. And we're thinking very hard about not only the here and now, but also particularly stepping into next academic year, how we can continue to involve that. And one of the ways that we're planning to evolve that into next academic year is to, to be developing a house system. We know at the moment that obviously students you know, exist in year groups. Many schools have a house system, which gives a, an opportunity for celebration, for student leadership, uh, for working between uh, uh, of students between years, 
uh, and really developing a culture of belonging of a community within a community, particularly the size uh, of ECC. Uh, things like house competitions and sports events and all sorts of things uh, that often uh, emerge from that, which we think really builds culture of aspiration, uh, uh, of friendly uh, competition uh, and uh, of real celebration of the amazing things that young people do. So that's something that we're working really, really hard on. Um, I've also spoken to students this week about the importance uh, of celebrating diversity and we've got a theme uh, this uh, month in April where every day students are being exposed to an individual who has an aspect of diversity that they have celebrated and often celebrated amongst others as well. And that's a really important thing for a community that in some ways isn't as diverse uh, as, as others. We're working really hard on, in our enrichment offer uh, and we've got a fantastic uh, sort of upgraded enrichment offer for the summer term uh, and hopefully you've seen that enrichment booklet with all of the things going on each lunchtime and after school uh, and obviously with huge thanks to all the staff that have been involved uh, in that. We've been pushing really hard uh, with students on punctuality, on making sure that um, you know, the movement around the site is as effective uh, as it can be. We know it's a big site. We know there is travel time involved. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because it gives students fresh air and a chance to just uh, regenerate that mind and that headspace before stepping into the next lesson. But students do need to be getting from A to B uh, swiftly. Uh, that is mostly the case but on occasion it's not, so that's something we're focusing on. Mobile phones, we've been really clear about the updated mobile phone policy, which says that even if we see a phone in a pocket, it will be confiscated. Um, it's just too tempting for a young person if a phone is in the pocket, and the chances are that they're using it at some point during the day if it is seen in their pocket. That's very standard practice now amongst many schools. It, the phone must be off and in bags, not seen and not heard. We have updated the, the consequences around that, uh, such that the first time students uh, use the phone, they can collect it at the end of the school day if they hand it over uh, without argument. The second time that needs to be picked up by the parents and the third time within a period, we will then keep that for a more um, elongated period of time. And then finally, the thing that I really pushed with students this week was around toilet cubicles. And in particular, the occasions where more than one student uh, is uh, in a toilet cubicle. That's a situation for which there is absolutely no good reason. And it actually doesn't allow us to um, um, provide our duty of care towards young people, ensuring that they're all safe. Uh, it exhausts a lot of staff time and capacity and resource, uh, those situations, uh, and typically uh, a reason why a student might be in a toilet cubicle would be around use of mobile phones, uh, often, or potentially vaping. Um, and so we are going to be really clear with students. We have been really clear that if you are found in a toilet cubicle with somebody else or that's uh, discovered that they will be having to spend some time uh, out of circulation in our internal space uh, and that if that is repeated, uh, there will be uh, suspensions applied if necessary. That's you know, a clearer line uh, on uh, toilet cubicles, but it's absolutely vital uh, that we don't find in our, uh, ourselves in a position where we cannot safeguard our young people. And that's a really important aspect of it. And we need our toilet spaces uh, to be able to be used for the right purposes uh, to feel safe uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, and not for inappropriate ones. So that's the updates really that I gave to students at the beginning of the week. Uh, in terms of expectations and continuing the journey going forwards. We remain uh, completely uh, committed to that journey uh, with you and your young people. Uh, they are uh, utterly brilliant uh, young people. We love spending every day with them. Even when we're all tired, uh, they bring a smile to the face. Uh, and all you, I have to do is step outside my office and spend two or three minutes with, uh, with a few of them to remember exactly why we do what we do. Uh, because they're a fantastic young people and together are working really hard as one team. And we've talked about that again this week with students. Uh, we can continue to, uh, to carry on that journey uh, that we're working so hard on. So thank you very much uh, for your, all your continued support. We ask you, of course, to keep in touch where you have worries or concerns. Uh, and we look forward to being in touch again before too long. Take care. Thank you very much.